Master Liang Show, what? <laughs> so today, oh no, Alibaba crashed to $70 level in the Hong Kong market. Alibaba is struggling. The Hansen Index, the Hansen Tech is struggling. Oh no. So what happened? Why do they no fire, no smoke, and suddenly morning sell down 2%, 3% already? Because the news got leaked. China gonna downgrade. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. So the news is that uh, Moody downgraded uh, the China outlook. But this information was leaked. So the insiders or even before the announcement, they already sold down in the morning. So the information was leaked at uh, 10 a.m. Like that. It, it was leaked on the WeChat. Then the official announcement only came after market close. Yeah, so a bit a bit late, like at 3, 4 uh, p.m. Then the Moody's announced, because they, they realized that uh, it was leaked already. Also originally was supposed uh, to uh, release this news after market close. So, so weird, but today I keep seeing and see, how come the market down 3%? I don't see anything negative news. Yeah, so uh, prior to their announcement, or at the uh, morning 10 a.m., there was a screenshot of the decision and its timing was being circulated on WeChat. So people, the institutional investors are mostly they just sold down in advance. But the fear was uh, overreaction. Uh, so we saw a 3% sell down. At the closing, the selling was only down 2%, so, so not that bad. So uh, the speculation was even in private chat rooms uh, as early as last Friday. So last Friday already, we got sold down already. Uh, so the insiders, wow, they, they play cheat one. <laughs> they have all the information of this uh, downgrade. So what is this downgrade about? So Moody's cut the China credit outlook. To negative so for all the countries right like even uh us or they have a credit rating in the past or triple a but now because they have 34 trillion in debt uh, in debt so their rating is cut from triple a to double a so your country the credit rating is very important it tells the whole world what the agency thinks of your economy whether your economy is strong or is it stable so they cut the outlook. Modi lowered the outlook of China uh, from stable to negative. Yeah, so, so this is the, the one uh, that's causing the sell down over the past few days. Also, mostly why they downgrade China because of the property crisis. Uh, this property downturn is poising risk that could spread deeper into the economy. It could spread also into the financial system. Then, a secondary issue will be the local governments uh, which the agreeing the, the borrowings are a bit elevated so the finance minister today even the ccp have to come out and make statement that's how serious because moody's is an international rating agency when you do an ipo or you issue a bond or be it in us or in china anywhere globally or you have to get a uh, agent the rating agency to give you a rating or A, triple A, B, or C, whatever. Yeah, so because if your rating is weak, like junk status, then the pricing will be much different already. So uh, the CCP, the finance minister, came out to fight back, say the impact of the property downturn is well under control. So is that so? Is that so? Later I'll talk more about their uh, property market. So the last time uh, Moody's cut the China rating was in 2017. So back then was also a financial crisis. So back then they were having an uh, economic wide debt crisis. And uh, in, for that debt crisis, right, what happened was that the, it started in 2015. The stock market crashed in 2015 and went on to, to uh, 16 and 17. So a lot of uh, the China banks, right, they were holding a lot of toxic asset or companies went bankrupt property also was in a downturn so they created uh the uh how to say uh, asset managers uh, like, like hua rong all this or you know, to buy all the toxic asset yeah so uh one way the ccp uh cleanse the system or is by purchasing the bad assets so there's an expectation now is that whether next year 
they will do the same or not yeah because there's a lot of toxic asset in the property sector so earlier this year right so the other two credit agency is Flinch and S&P Global also Flinch right or was considering their A plus uh, Soviet rating but in the end they still give it a stable outlook so the S&P Global also same or give it the A plus so A plus or and and uh, AA3 uh, is the same so there they are three rating uh, triple A double A and single A so China is basically a single A rating very few countries have a uh, triple A triple A is like Singapore Canada Hong Kong uh, I think yeah so so and Switzerland so so these countries they have a lot of surplus that means they have a lot of asset and very little debt then they can get the triple A yeah so welcome all to the master long show so I had a poll uh, asking you all how how you think oh oh I still got some extra slides uh. oh, yeah, yeah. haven't finished yet ah today blur already so the worry by the credit agencies right is that uh for them right their government spending usually seldom exceed uh three percent of their GDP uh spending means your your annual budget like to build the railways to build infrastructure to support all the education uh healthcare all this so that's government spending so uh a three percent deficit deficit right means every year they collect 100 dollars in tax but they spend 103 dollars or in government spending a three percent a small deficit is okay because usually your growth is higher example you have a five percent uh, GDP growth so you go into 3% deficit is okay because your growth is higher than that so the next year you will earn even more to cover back so there's the worrisome that the deficit is more than your growth because China the GDP now is 5% and some are saying that it might come down to 4% so it's the worry and uh, because of the lockdowns the past 3-4 uh, years the economy was slow so they actually spend more to stimulate the economy so this worrying uh, the analysts but lastly on the positive night positive, positive side uh, usually this uh, rating downgrade right, or negative outlook often marks the low or the bottom of of the market sell off just like 2015 the market crash then 2017 then they downgrade that end up is a bull market so this is like the same thing or well, we had the crash in 21 2223 uh, three years of crash now then they downgrade so usually the downgrade marks the bottom rate because it's hard for things to get worse than the current bearish expectations it only takes a little to see a tactical rebound or a short squeeze because most people 90 percent is already have either sold off already paper hand or already shorting so very few people are left already or the balance that are left is diamond hand so if there's a small bit of positive news it could lead to a rebound or a short squeeze and the shortest will have to cover yeah so the next part i'll talk about the bite dance la. so i had a poll for you all oh wow, wow the poll is moving so fast la. okay give you all a, a few moment to enter your vote then i come to i say hi to you all first lim ch baba can reach 100 10 120 next year very good already la. i'm still hopeful for 150 la. baba to double next year or oh, double to 150 next year see if you can go empty pals welcome <clears throat> Vivian Daniel Ng, stay at seventy to eighty dollar PE six. Also, that you, you all can buy cheap. Right? Yeah, low price is good for the value investors. J H J H Boon, good evening, welcome, welcome. New B earnings. Is it? I I didn't see any new the 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 I forgot the new results. Really, but their deliveries is quite strong. Yeah, but not as strong as X Ping. I I would say and BYD. So Vivian, every time I see Baba price down, I check the price to free cash flow six times. Yeah, scold some sort of vulgarities than price I'm like, yeah, it's just way, way, way too cheap. People are pricing Alibaba like it's a scam, like it's worthless. So I think they are wrong. Pixel Princess, this time really one ton. Uh. There goes my retirement. <laughs> don't 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 so sad. Ah, uh, Pixel Princess, don't so sad. Our goddess of uh, uh, SG, ha. <laughs> Can 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 endure 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 can one can one yeah, uh it, it won't go bankrupt lah. It's still a bullshit company lah. You think if Alibaba go zero right, oh that means uh millions of people in China uh, become unemployed if uh, Alibaba goes down and the CCP lose billions 
of tax revenues. So impossible for Alibaba to go bankrupt one. As long as you are not on margin, or uh, your Alibaba value won't go to zero. So don't worry. Jin Yu, Ma Meng Kok, welcome, welcome. David Wong, welcome. Vivian Daniel Eun is big boss, you know, got personal assistant one. You all don't bully our Vivian Daniel Eun. Uh, meme news, I sold all my US stocks now. Now I have 55k USD to whack uh, MCHI. Is the MSCI the China uh, ETF, is it? Yeah, wow, slowly buy, uh, slowly DCA. But US, uh, I think it's a good time to take profit. It, it might go a bit higher, I don't know. Yeah, but, but looks uh, very peak already. Li Yong, welcome, welcome. Yeah, but meme news uh, sub sound like it's young investor. Uh, be greedy when others are fearful. Now China is really a uh, max fear. Yeah. Anantas, uh, Ferd Maggie, welcome, welcome. Nip, nip. Last time, uh, NATO tried to destroy Russia currency when war. Uh, Russia announced uh, back currency and sell oil with gold or destroy those uh, uh, sanctions. In the end, their, their sanctions uh, by, by the West doesn't work. Even now, the oil sanction, they say that cannot buy oil from Russia more than $60, but people still pay more than $60 because they need the energy or they gone cash already. Hantu, welcome, welcome. Your, your, your message got deleted. The AI deleted your message. I don't know why. Cannot share a website link, cannot uh, use vulgarity, and cannot have sensitive word. I don't know how the AI works. Yeah. But, but if it cannot delete it already, you just type again, can already. Uh, no worries. Yeah, okay. Hantu, Daniel Ng is the Hercules. Oh, our, our god, yeah. Very strong. Okay, Li Seng Yi. Hi, ML and all. China market really bad, man. Like, no logic or in the uh, denier. Yeah, so later I'll talk about the fundamentals. Don't worry. Yeah, China is not printing a lot of money. Actually, they are quite prudent with their spending. Okay, so we have 72 votes. Oh, it's quite mixed. Ah. Half of you all say, gone case already. Ah, yeah. Another half say, still got hope. What, ah? So I think the views are, are quite mixed. I, I think we are quite positive overall. I think for a, if it's a non-Alibaba community, I think 90% will vote gone case already. I think most external investors uh, feel that uh, gone case already. Lazy investors fear of the trust collapse. Yeah, so a lot of the trust that yesterday I shared, they get the capital from high net worth investors. The trust got hit very hard oh, by the downfall of the property sector. Andy, how to resist selling my Baba? So a lot of people, you are fearful. For example, if you are so stressed with your Baba position, you cannot sleep at night, right? Then you trim a bit. Oh. But it's not wise to sell all your Alibaba just because you are fearful. But your health is more important. So like, you are very fearful, you trim a bit, 10%. Then you go to sleep, see can sleep or not. Or you, sleep, you trim 10%, still cannot sleep, right? Then the next day, you trim another 10%. Trim your position until your comfort level, you can go to sleep. Uh, then you hold the remaining shares, you diamond hand. So, so health is more important than wealth. Well, money can slowly earn back in the future. But don't because of Alibaba, you destroy your health. Yeah. BKAPA, oh, rocket, rocket, hot ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, got the recent uh, China e commerce news data I'll cover in my slides. All the latest news will cover. NY, GG, Liao, oh no, <laughs> also scared, la. yeah, yeah, Jun Hao Tan, Baba technical pattern looks like falling wedge, yes, yeah, it's a falling wedge, descending wedge, la. it looks like a consolidation, once the triangle, the wedge is complete, then it can bounce up sharply, so we, we are now waiting for the bounce, that's why endure, endure, wait for the bounce up, okay, okay, so let me update you, also one shot, I'll update you on the market, then we go into the Q&A, because nowadays, I'm going to do my master cuts, yeah, so one, one shot I talk, uh, then it, later on I, I cut the small clip, it's easier for me. So let me begin today the main sharing. Also, uh, bite dance. Oh, the, uh, basically TikTok uh, is going to strike a deal with Tokyopedia because they want to re enter the Indonesian market. So, Tokyopedia across several areas, uh, they, they want to have a partnership. So, they will announce the details as soon as next week. So, I read other websites, uh, which is those like tech websites, which is not official news. There's rumors that TikTok will be injecting capital into Tokyopedia. So Tokyopedia, the bigger shareholder is SoftBank. Number two is actually Alibaba. So they will want to compete against Shopee. But even if they inject capital and strike this deal, they need approval by the regulatory. Uh, so it, it might still fail. So we see how. But now I think the market already factor in this negative news. That's why. SE is struggling at the $35 level. 
So Indonesia right, is a very huge market. You see that the digital economy uh, is expected to grow to almost 1.6 trillion uh, US dollar by 2045. So there's a lot of growth ahead. Uh. Uh, it can make up about 18% of its GDP. So Indonesia, the population is 300 over million. If you look at Southeast Asia, Indonesia, based on e-commerce, makes up half of the Southeast Asia market. So it's a very huge market due to their population size. So the problem with Indonesia banning uh, TikTok, right? Other governments in Southeast Asia are also worried whether uh, TikTok, the live stream, is exploiting the consumers. First, live stream, the thing is that there's such a strong connection between the influencer and the audience. Then the influ influencer, they can abuse their power to brainwash their followers, to buy things that they don't need or chop their carrot or oversell them things. For example, uh, when the live stream, right, usually things that you sell are commonly like health products, cosmetic, la, beauty, la, fashion, those kind of things. So the margins are very high and the effectiveness of the product can be subjective. There are influencers who sell, say, oh, you eat this pill, can, can slim down. Or you, I think there's one I see is the drink the coffee. Uh. Drink the coffee can slim down one. Uh. I'm like, huh? slimming coffee, uh, does it really work or not? So it's a, a very questionable product, but they sell it at a premium. So it feels like they're, they're chopping carrot. Also, so it, it, it can go to the dark side. So the live streaming, this kind of selling, uh, the government is a bit skeptic. So uh, after the Indonesia ban on the TikTok live streaming to do the e-commerce, Malaysia is considered regulating. So I think not only Malaysia, I think maybe Singapore or even Philippines, Thailand, Vietnam, all this, the government will be reviewing, but it will be different. Even like for YouTube in Singapore, uh, there's rumors that they want to regulate finance YouTubers uh, because there were so many complaints that uh, YouTubers was promoting high growth tech and crypto and some of these the investments became worthless. And so that's why the government might even regulate YouTubers. But even there's a regulation, master will still be around because I'm financially trained. I have the financial background and in the past, I have all the certification. So if they regulate, I just go for the exams, pass everything, I get the license, I can continue streaming. But it will hurt other finance YouTubers who do not have financial background. Then they might be eliminated uh, as a financial YouTuber. So, so that's quite serious. So the online space, I think regulation will only increase. It, it will not decrease. It will only be more regulated. What is very difficult and very different from uh, normal retail. So Indonesia, right? Who are the market leader in terms of e-commerce? Number one is Shopee under the SE. Number two is uh, Tokyo Media. So together they make up almost 71% of the market share already. Number three, Lazada, which is under Alibaba. Number four, uh, Bukalapak, which is under N Group. So the TikTok already gone already, but, but they were so aggressive. Well, just within one year, they captured a 5% market share. So basically they sell things, right? They subsidize the, the influencer. Example, the influencer sell the rice cooker or sell, uh, let's say, a handbag. So the original price uh, could be like $20 uh, USD of value. But the TikTok will give a subsidy of $19. The consumer only pay one dollar. Yeah, they sell to you for just one dollar. But you must open a new account, sign up, and 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 purchase it. Yeah, so they burn money to capture market share because uh, they are so cash rich and they have so much investor money. That's why within just one year, they, they capture a five percent market share, and that's why SE felt the trap. So previously they already turned profitable, but they see TikTok growing so fast. So Shopee decided to also burn money to compete, to defend its market share. That's why in the recent quarter, uh, the e-commerce business uh, became loss making. So we saw in the fourth quarter, TikTok already banned already. So I think the next coming quarter uh, for Shopee e-commerce, I think the numbers will be a bit better uh, because temporarily they lose this competitor. But once it's approved, then I think competition will be back again in 2024. But am I worried? I'm not worried. So like I explained to you all, E-commerce is all about market leadership position. You must be top three. Top three can all be profitable. But if you're number four, number five, you don't have the economies of scale. Then it has a network effect. Let's say I, I, I'm a merchant in Indonesia. 
I want to sell a certain product, maybe in Indonesia, I, I go to the village there, I see that, oh, they have a very good craftsman, craftsmanship, or then they craft the wooden furniture. So I want to sell wooden furniture or, or wooden, or I, I want to sell oil painting, right? oil painting. Also, I, I find it so I want to sell it online. So I'm a, a merchant. I want, I want to sell oil painting, I want to sell furniture online. What platform will I use? Of course, I'll go to the largest one. Well, I'm, I'm a first-time merchant. Cannot be I, I go to uh, Bukala Park or, or Lazada, am I right? Uh, I want to go where all the customer are and, and they will give me uh, uh, the platform is easy to use and I feel that uh, it has a, a reputable and a good track record. Yeah, so probably I want to list my product on Shopee or Tokopedia. So usually the, the top or most of the merchants will be in the top two and top three platform. So market leadership position is very important, especially when it comes to e-commerce. Yeah, so uh, going back to the China market. So short term, I think SE, the stock price, the $5 level is still a strong support. Lah. So I think it should hold there until the next earnings result. So all eyes is uh, on SE. So the next earnings result probably will be in February lah, after Ch Chinese New Year. So all eyes will be whether the full year results uh, are they profitable full year? And, and over the full year, what is their growth rate? And uh, the good news is last quarter already shown that for SE, right, the gaming business has stabilized. The positive catalyst could come is that the gaming business start to accelerate. Example, they're going into uh, India through the free fire, which is delayed. Lah. So that maybe is 2024. But recent, their back cover game is very popular. So uh, that, that could help in their... Uh, for four Q results, but but uh mostly is two zero two three is stabilization, then two zero two four can S E go back into growth mode, maybe ten to fifteen percent revenue growth. Uh, is that possible or not? So uh, we see how it goes uh. But S E if you want to buy into S E, it's more like a two or three year play, whether they can maintain their uh, leadership position, uh and and they generate profitability from there. So, uh, China, the economic data is actually very strong. That's why I'm surprised. Hey, how come today down 3%? I scratch my head. Morning, I see the PMI. Wow, it's so good. So, the China service uh, PMI actually rose uh, to a 3-month high of 51.5. So, last month it was 50.4. So, 50 is the, is the middle mark. La. Below 50 is a contraction. Above 50 is an expansion. So, October was a little bit slow. But uh, November, so explosive. That means November uh, service was very strong. So what is service? So for the PMI, there's two parts. Oh, there's manufacturing, there's service. Manufacturing, obviously, yeah, is how much goods you produce. Service is basically what you, you spend uh, as a consumer. Example, you buy food, or you, you, you go and travel, or you uh, stay at a hotel. Also, like food, travel, and shopping. So, so, so that's service. So as an e-commerce player, uh, th that's very good also. So November is also uh, the month that we saw the 11-11 sales. So I think 11-11 sales should be quite okay. So later I'll talk more about the 11-11 sales. So uh, for the composite, composite it means both manufacturing and service combined was 51.6. So that's good. Uh, it's the strongest readings since August. So we are seeing a recovery already. So in the middle of this year, everything slowed down. There's a worry that we might go into a downturn. So I believe that's not true. Lah. All the data showing is that consumer spending is coming back already. So fundamentally, I'm not worried. But there's one critical risk. That's the property sector. If the property sector goes out of hand, explode, and the ripple effect goes into the financial sector, uh, that might bring the whole China economy down. So property is now my number one concern. Other than that, I see manufacturing, retail, uh, food la uh, travel everything it looks quite okay already so don't worry fundamentally nothing is wrong only property is the main problem so for the ccp right they have an important meeting the annual meeting is due this month in december so it, the question is what is ahead for 2024 then they have another meeting called the third plenum i, I don't know how to pronounce this also so this uh, economic a meeting that is held once every five years. So every five years, they vote for the new party leader and the new new team. But this new team right, has not conducted this meeting. So it's quite weird. 
So SJP has not given any indication of the meeting timing or whether it will be held or not. So post China, right, they operate in, in, in a way that they have a five-year plan. So I, I get a new party, then the party will say, in the next five years, I want to hit this target. And say, next five years, I want to double my GDP. Or next five years, I want to grow my population. Or next five years, I want to be the leader in certain technology areas. So they, they have not had this meeting. Also, I think this meeting is important to boost the morale, to give us what is the direction for us or, uh, in the next five years. Yeah, so this meeting has not been conducted yet. So there's some uncertainty or what's, what is the future direction. But for the economists, they believe that China should see a growth rate, a GDP growth rate of about 5% in 2024, similar to this year. La. So this year, definitely, I think they will hit the 5% mark. La. But whether it's 5.5% or 5.2, we don't know yet. Uh, so wait for another month, we look at the full year, 2023 GDP. But now everyone is forward looking. The stock market is 6 to 12 months forward looking. So the big question is 2024, still got growth or not? Or will it slow down? Will the GDP uh, be like 4%? So I believe that CCP, they must uh, set their target at 5%. So usually they will announce this in uh, after Chinese New Year. After China, they announced what is the full year GDP, or probably in uh, early March like that, or, or late February. So if they announce that their target is 4.5%, 4.8%, well, I think the, the, the China market might sell down further. Well, that's quite weak. They must announce 5%. So I think 5% is the baseline. So the main problem is still the China property sector. So you can see this uh, chart here, right? It's the top 100 property developers. The large property developers, what is their sales? So in 2-0, the, the, the lockdown sales was strong. Then 2-1, it came down even slower. So the bump is actually seasonality. Usually mid-year and December is where uh, there's most home purchases because that's the holiday period. Uh, pe holiday period, people, the families will go and view the home and buy the house. So June and year-end is the, is, the, is the most important where you see the bump up. So year over year, like 2-0, the dark blue uh, was very strong. Also, 150 uh, million sales, uh, 150, uh, 150 billion of billion value, uh, value worth. Uh, but 2 1 is lesser sales, 2 2 even lesser, 2 3 gone case already. So, we are now in a critical junction. So, uh, how this chart will play out is that likely it will be a uptake, a small uptake upwards. Uh, so we didn't know two two three is very bad. The big question is, what about two zero two four? Is two zero two four will the line even be lower? If it's lower, it means property gone case. So I think there's a very uh, there's an urgency la, to really stimulate, and so that two zero two four the chart when it's spotted out is above the two zero two three. Two zero two three is really cannot make it. It it must push for a stronger recovery. So one way that the CCP can push is through quantitative easing so cutting interest rate or cutting the reserve ratio so expectation is that there will be further cuts uh, in the reserve ratio so that banks could hold less reserve and there will be more liquidity in the open market but the big QE is whether they want to start a state-owned fund to do open market purchases like what happened in 2015, 2016 or the CCP come in to buy the asset so I think they should buy the asset, like the property, now even the homes, like the tier, uh, the tier 1 cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, the price is holding very well. The price don't drop much because they're like blue chip companies. There's always strong demand in the coastal area, the tier 1 city. But now there's very weak demand in like the tier 3 to tier 5 city. Nobody wants to stay there. Lah. That, that is like for retirement one. So there's a thinking that the CP, CP can purchase those assets. Then they just rent it out or then they do rental with those assets or whatever. So I think the CCP needs to step in now or do quantitative easing. That's my view. Lah. So we can only wait for further announcement. So now is the year end already. So they are doing meetings. So we look at early next year. Chinese New Year rally, see whether got positive news or not. But more or less, I expect the next one or two months more towards a sideways movement. Lah. We, we uh, wait their meeting whether they have the big news or not. So lastly, company news, Tencent, oh no. Previously, we had the Alibaba uh, cloud outage twice in one month. Then the TT, the app also had the outage. Now it's Tencent turn. All of them all don't know why they have the outage. 
I believe is that my personal view, uh, the trend is that all the big tech, they have this outage is because they do too much cost cutting. Because in the good times, right, like the maintenance teams feels like they do nothing and they are overpaid. But maintenance is important. When you cut back on maintenance, you cut back on, on the IT spending, then cock ups, accidents do start to happen. So not say for a tech company, like I give you an example like a physical engineering company. So like in Singapore, we have SMRT. So SMRT, they want to deliver addition, uh, upsize returns to the shareholders, 20% return on equity. So they cut back on the maintenance of the MRT tracks for 10 years. So the 10 years, all the shareholders enjoy very high returns. But after 10 years, oh, the MRT start to break down. That every week, oh, there is a breakdown. So it's the same thing. When you cut back on maintenance of your servers, of your system, or oh, then they might start start to malfunction once in a while. So uh, I, I, I think that there must be a balance to it. Uh. You cannot over uh, cut. You cannot cut everything uh, to the bare bone. Like what Elon Musk did. Lay off 80% of the Twitter workers. And then he cut too much, then he hire back. So I think the, the same thing with this Chinese big tech. I think they lay off too many workers. But... I think they are able to identify the problem and slowly they are rehiring, rehiring already. So, uh, Alibaba, there's this news that they are transferring the stakes of some of their uh, Chinese companies to a new vehicle. So basically, in the past, they hold these companies under the Alibaba network technology. So it's an Alibaba group holding subsidiary serve as a holding uh, vehicle for its equity stakes. Equity stakes means these are listed companies that they hold maybe a 5%, 10% or 20% stake. So uh, they have transferred shares of at least seven listed companies to this new local venture. So of these seven companies includes that Focus Media, Advertising Placement uh, Service Provider, YTO or it's basically a last mile delivery a courier company and also uh, so by transferring all this right so the Alibaba network can focus on its core business that's what they explain so uh, the transfer include other businesses uh, such as uh, home decor uh, furniture retailer red star Macaulay group cosmetic e-commerce player Shanghai Lily and beauty so uh, okay, and another few companies that are like China, Trans Info Technology, uh, Retail Easy Home. Anyway, so I went through all these companies, right? But I, I'm not doing a deep dive coverage. So I, with, but with this scan through these seven companies, uh, six of them, they are, they are listed in the Shanghai Exchange. One of them is listed in the Hong Kong Exchange. So I do not have the details that Alibaba hold how much percentage stake of each of these companies. But most of them, they are actually like small cap or mid cap companies. So they are transferring all these stakes right to a new holding company. It means right, this holding company right is specialized in holding stakes in listed company. So Alibaba might do two things. Number one right, they uh spin it out as a holding company, an investment company, like like a, a trust like that. Or on uh or num number two, they might be selling off all these asset because they are listed company. You can sell it in open market. Then they get the cash. Then the cash they can do share buyback or pay dividend. So probably these two direction. So they're gonna do something with it. That's why they move it all to a different subsidiary. So they are consolidating their investment. So they are now it's quite clear that Alibaba is still doing their restructuring. Everything is being divided and being more clear. Like if you're logistic business, you do logistics. Then uh, if you're cloud business, you do cloud. So somewhere in between, you don't know. Then you put in the investment. Or then you decide what, what you want to do. So everything is being categorized very clearly already. So they have all their different units. So what I believe, right, after this restructuring, right, the next time, because now we have a new management, the Eddie Wu and the <laughs> Joseph Tsai. So the, when they do the reporting of their results, the breakdown will be different also. You, you might see that they have another extra portion called the uh, investment portfolio or whatever. So I think they, they will have more breakdown because Alibaba is really very huge and also very undervalued. So the positive news about e-commerce, why I remain positive about e-commerce was e-commerce, right? The digitization will only become more and more digital. 
cannot be we go to the physical shopping mall, we shop more and more. We, we are shopping less in the physical shopping mall. We are buying more online. Am I right? So in China, right, oh, the de- delivery is very exaggerated. So you can see quite la. Quite means the last mile delivery. They send it to your home. Then you see this picture. This picture is the 11-11 sale. See mountains and mountains of parcel. So the uh, logistic business is booming. We see that the Cai Niao la, JD Logistics is growing at 30% of revenue growth yearly. So uh, logistics are continuing to boom. So for their parcel delivery right in China, it is a new high of 120 billion. So that's good news for all the e-commerce players, Alibaba, JD, Pinduoduo, and even Douyin. So the current delivery average about 100 per person. Eh. Oh, that's so much, you know. That's a lot. So you minus the baby, that there are about 100 uh, 20 billion, uh, so there's about 1.2 billion, uh, so population is 1.4 billion. So about 1.2 billion are people who are eligible, working adult or students that can use the product. So each of them uh, 100. So that's a lot. For for me, right, I do buy a lot from like Shopee. So maybe I get one delivery a month. So one year, maybe I get t- 10 delivery. Or 10 to 15 delivery, I would say. But in China, one year each person get 100 delivery so you divide it by 12 months people are getting about eight deliveries uh per month and they're getting about two deliveries per week what about you all uh, so i think i think it, it, this is a good uh, poll to see how digitalized are you like how many parcel uh, or uh, online delivery do you receive uh, per week per week yeah per, per week I think per week maybe some could be zero. I say per month, uh, per month. For for me, I I get one or two passer, or uh, per, per per month. So what about your? Also, uh, maybe the first one is like zero to two, or per month maybe maybe, uh zero to one. Okay, zero to one. Then how is that? Two to four maybe. There's another group. Then another five or more. I think think I think then we just have a rough, just a rough idea. Of like how how savvy are you? For me, I get about a uh, one to two delivery. I'll vote for the middle one. Uh. I get about uh, two delivery per month. Uh, so, but I I believe, uh, for for them, I see hundred per year. Oh, uh, that that is like eight eight per month. Eh. In China, it's eight per month. So it's freaking scary. Uh. but but a uh, scary as if I'm a common folk. Uh, but if I I'm a, like the logistic business, I'm an e-commerce business. That's good money. So, like, for me, I'm from Singapore. So I think Singapore, right, the parcel delivery is only more and more and more. Yeah, and it's so convenient. It's getting more and more convenient. So I think there's a lot of room for digital penetration, especially in Southeast Asia, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand. There's a lot of room to digitalize. Yeah, definitely logistics will be more and more important. Like we see recently, the J and T Express, which I did the deep dive, they started off in Indonesia. Indonesia, they have a fifty percent, uh, eh, I think seventy percent market share, uh, in in the log logistics, yeah. So they they are a huge player, so, and then now they are expanding uh, rapidly in the Asian market. J and T Express. So I quite interested to know about the China uh, IPO next year. So I think China the growth rate is also very high. Now they are expanding aggressively in the Asia market. So uh, for within one month to go, uh, with one month to go, so now we are only early December. So about three more weeks to go. So the China, the shipment volume already up 8.5% this year. So with three more weeks to go, I think it can reach 10%. Or year end, usually the shipment is more. So te- 9 or even 9 or 10% or shipment in, in the... Uh, so basically, that's the logistics volume. So logistics is definitely very high growth. So overall logistics is up uh, 9 10 percent But how come Cai Niao and uh, JD Logistics, JT Logistics, they are showing 30 percent growth? Because only the top few players are getting all the orders. Certain companies like Pinduoduo, uh, Douyin, Kuai Shou, they don't have their logistic, logistic uh, business. So they outsource it to Cai Niao, uh, JNT, and also uh, JD Logistics. So uh, that's the benefit. But for logistics, it's very capital intensive. 
So why China has become so successful? Because of infrastructure, like the entire railway network. Uh, so that infrastructure in China is very strong and they're going to bring the same technology uh, into Southeast Asia. Like Indonesia, uh, they actually set up their first high-speed railway uh, near the capital. And that one is actually uh, built by China. So Indonesia, you will see, give it another 10 or 20 years, maybe the whole country will be connected by railway and it will be China technology. So China is investing heavily into Indonesia. So also your, your army of Korea, or the boots on the ground, and also technology. So the technology, right, is that like their warehouse, right, is all automated warehouse. It's all the robot sorting everything and piling up everything. Or human is the one that or drive the van to do the last mile delivery. The warehouse is all fully automated already. So uh, overall, looking at the numbers of the shipping volume, my online shopping has proven to be recovering strongly this year. So obviously, if, if you're shipping uh, 10% more, your sales is 10% more. But your GMV growth, right, I would estimate, is maybe f uh, revenue growth uh, is uh, 5%. So shipping volume is up 10%, but your revenue growth is 5%, a bit lower, because the average ship shipping price of per parcel right, is down. So maybe the average parcel, right, the price is $20, in the past, now maybe it's down 5% or to like $18 or, or something because uh, sell fee jiang ji, people spend less. They want to buy the same products, but they pay a lower price. Yeah, so they're spending less, but they're they still, but they're buying more, more products. So in the end, a lot of fear, a lot of gloom and doom. People say that, ah, yeah, Alibaba gone case. Ah. So this quote by Charlie Munger, you're looking for a mispriced gamble. That's what investing is. When a mispriced gamble, people think that it's worthless, but you gamble that it's worth a lot. Or, and you know, you have to know enough to know whether the gamble is mispriced or not. So you think that this is mispriced, this is a jewel, but people think it's shit, uh, it's dog shit. <laughs> so people think Alibaba is dog shit, but we think that it's a diamond. But do we know enough uh, that we know that Alibaba, the business is real, the fundamentals is real? that going ahead, there will still be growth. So if you know the answer and you have the courage to buy, that's value investing. Value investing doesn't come from blind conviction. Like for me, when I say I, I, I put 90% of my portfolio in Alibaba, or not that I'm gambling, it's because I've done my homework. Like I've been streaming, I think for 11 months, going one year already. Or end of the, so one more month, uh, I, I started uh, very late last year, early this year. Lah. So it's almost one year anniversary of Master the Streaming. I've talked a lot about China market. So every time you see me stream, I read all the news. I try to get as much information to know about the China economy, to know about all these China companies. Not only Alibaba, I analyze the competitors also. Yeah, then in the end, good news or bad news, I share with you all. Yeah, if it's good, I say it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. So I think fundamentally, Alibaba is really like, I did the sum of parts. Easily it's worth two, three hundred dollars per share. But the market is mispriced. So I think this is a gamble worth taking. That's why I'm long on Alibaba. So endure. Uh, danger is opportunity. La. If you believe Alibaba is mispriced, then it's an easy buy at the $70 level. If not, then, then just avoid the Chinese market. Yeah, so how many parcels do we do you all receive per month? So that's the question that I ask you all. Uh, so, uh, 42% of you all, zero or one. So more like me, la. so don't order so much. La. Or 29%, five or more. Wow, so, so that's a lot. I'm, I'm surprised that uh, almost 30% of you all get five delivery per month. That, that's quite a lot. So you all use Lazada, Shopee, or I don't know. Yeah, and 26% is two to four. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah I see what people get the Baba Bird. Oh, go Kim. Okay, thanks for support. Thanks for your Milo Pain. Crypto to the moon. Bitcoin, uh, 42k. Still very strong. Lah. Like yesterday, break above the resistance. Very strong, very strong. Yeah, so that's all my sharing uh, for tonight. Feel free to ask Master anything. Yeah, we chit chat with you all before I call it a day. Wow, the chat moved very fast. Let me scroll up uh, to, to see your, your questions. Okay, so go back here. Okay, so uh, Hantu, 
阿里巴巴 become 阿里妈妈呀，哇 ，become very weak already。阿里哥，平安有 buy more， 平安 now 哇 ，I think more than thirty percent discount to book value。I think 平安 dividend you like seven point five percent already。So if you like dividends， 哇，平安 is very attractive。I wish I got extra money。I would really love to buy Ping An, yeah. But my focus now is still Baba and JD. Pixel Princess bounce also don't know bounce how high, yeah. But it, a strong bounce up then that could mark the bottom already. So more more importantly, you want it to bottom off like have a strong bounce up to show that it has bottom. Is seventy the bottom? I don't know. It could come to as low as sixty lah. So be mentally prepared lah. If it comes to sixty, will you still have the power to continue holding or not? Yeah. Li Sheng Yi, Baba Boat downgrade to Sampan Boat. Oh no! David Wong, why Ping An revenue keep dropping? Uh, their revenue drop, man. I remember this year, I think their revenues is up five percent. Then the earnings down ten percent, something like that. I forget already. Uh, the economy is slow, lah. So the revenue growth is slow. The earnings is down because of their investment portfolio, their exposure to property, and the bad weather in China. So they are, they are, they are. Property and casualty, the claims has a has an increase. That's why Ping An the results this year is is pretty weak. Uh, but I uh, uh, the dividends they only have a sixty percent payout ratio, lah. So earnings down ten percent, they should still be able to maintain the same dividend payout or even increase it uh slightly. Or uh, Harry C J L, Ping An do government service. Yes, they have the smart city business, so they take on government projects. Like example, help government to do the software related to the urban planning lah, hospital lah, fire stations lah, pollution lah, city building lah, all this. It's basically Ping An. They have that the Palantir version of the business, the tech Palantir tech business, but serving the Chinese government. So do check out my my China, uh, Ping An deep dive. Yeah, I talk talk about all their tech business. Yeah. Vivian Daniel Ng, oh the red bird gone, oh your Grab Pay got pay got problem. Oh no, change your payment method. No wonder. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, in our heart, you are always the king of Baba Bird. Hey, now got the red bird come back out already. Yeah, oh, oh the red bird is back already. What power lah? Thanks for support. Uh huh. Thanks Vivian Daniel Ng for the support. What lah? What lah? ELM. Oh, welcome, welcome. Okay, I see. Got what? What questions? Okay, Pixel Princess gonna freeze my account now. Don't wanna see. Wait for rally then defaults. Yeah, as long as that you're not in debt lah, you're not using margin, then you know the fundamentals is strong. Just put into freezer. One two year later then you defaults. Then you look at how much meat there is. Yeah, Vivian, I just check out NetEase. So NetEase is a game company. It's actually getting cheap. Everything is very cheap in the China market. Mei Tuan. Also cheap, quite so cheap. Everything net is also cheap. Everything was also cheap. Okay. Anyone, David Wong, anyone analyze the technicals of Alphabet and Berkshire? A U.S. market, everything now seems like an uptrend. I also don't know how to see. Net is results was 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 quite good this year. Twelve percent revenue growth, twenty five percent free cash flow growth. Previously, uh, during uh two one and two two, the CCP cracked down on the game. The game industry. So for two years, uh, no new titles was launched. So the past one year, a lot of new titles are being released. So all the game companies they they start to go back into growth mode again. So so that's good news for NetEase and Tencent. Lazy investor. MT Pulse the HI do tech analysis on China stocks. MT Pulse two weeks ago they called for bullish stance on Baba and JD, but their prediction is meant for two zero two four. They also have bullish stance on Kuai Shou. Wow, as a value play, definitely lah two zero two four bullish uh stance for the China market. In fact, their prediction in two zero two four will be good for the entire China e-commerce. Yeah. I agree because, uh, like I show you, my China e-commerce has started to recover already. Then, parcel delivery in two zero two four will be higher. 
than two zero two three. More and more digitalization. So that's that's the trend ahead. MT Pow Fun Track continues to ask everyone buy on dip. They are like super bullish, ah. Yeah, buy 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 buy. Create the the even uh bubble. Yeah, what well, ask master to start ETF ah? Oh, uh, meet Kevin ETF become meet master ETF ah. Oh, uh, Vivian Ng global ETF. Oh, uh, Vivian Daniel Ng can become fund manager. Start own fund. Yeah, own self seed the fund. I want to start the master global asset uh, in, uh investment fund. Or uh, then my AUM hundred million. Just kidding yeah. If I start a fund, I, I want to put my own money in. Maybe in the future, like Michael Burry. Michael Burry started off as a doctor. Then, then in the end, he was so popular. He was a doctor writing his own blog. Then a lot of people like his pics. Then uh, Michael Burry resigned as a doctor to start his own fund. The, the SCION, a scrunch uh, asset management. And then he made big money in the global financial crisis. But that's another story. Uh, but now... Uh, he still continues to manage his own fund, but only his he managed only his own money, no external investors. Oh, uh, Chong Costa, good evening. Go Kim, if you stuck around in bear market, don't get stuck in bear market trading mindset. Totally different in bull market. Yeah, the mindset is very important. And BK8PA, any market movers here can help push SE to the moon. Uh, SE the market cap, uh, twenty billion also not very small. How to push? If ten million dollar company can push ah, twenty billion dollar company, how to push? Yeah, how to any doubt on Felix ah? Any doubt on Master ah? <laughs> Yeah, you all want to invest with Master ah? No lah, I cannot be a set manager lah. Don't have the qualifications ah. Master can only talk on on YouTube only. Yeah. Lee Seng Yi, I can only DCA Baba won't even sell one share Bo Pian. Wait for. China fundamentals to catch up. Yeah, I think feels like a very long winter. Now it's winter for we. Ho I'm hopeful, but I'm hopeful for two zero two four lah. Hopefully the dragon ready come. Everything can defrost and we can start moving. David Wong, ah, uh, I buy about ten orders per month. Oh, that's a lot lah. Well, everything you buy ah, food, and but but more. So you buy. So David, I remember you are from Malaysia, right? So in Malaysia, uh, what platform you use? Oh, like Shopee, Lazada. Or, or what path or grab what, what platform you, you use to order or even then you earn i think i barely hit 100 for whole family uh. or 100 per person yeah crazy in china 100 per person is very crazy that means like a family of four they buy almost every day 400 a year they buy almost every day but it's so convenient like, like in china right like the parcel delivery the cost is just 50 cents like they deliver one parcel to your doorstep right they only charge 50 cents uh chinese yuan in sing dollars that's like 10 cents 10 cents sing dollar only but but uh current the, the forex currency issue uh, but like uh, in singapore now our parcel delivery i think is about two three dollars per delivery but eventually we will get to 50 cents also give it another two three years uh, i think parcel delivery in singapore will also reach 50 cents ivy lim our goddess of se welcome welcome Oh, queen of SE. Welcome. Today, everything is red pre-market. Yeah. Baba, JD, SE, all red pre-market. Meme news. 60% NTOC app delivery. 30% Taobao. Wow, I use Taobao. That's good. 10% Shopee, Lazada. Wow, thanks for support. Yeah, thanks for support. For me, mostly I use the Shopee. Uh. Shopee looks very cheap. In the past, I used uh, Lazada. But I feel that Shopee seems a bit cheaper for me. So, mostly I use uh, Shopee nowadays. Lazada feels a bit atas. Yeah, NTUC I don't support because my house nearby got Sing Song. I go to the Sing Song supermarket to buy the toilet paper and instant noodles. Yeah, Russell C. Baba, window dressing where portfolio managers want to reduce or remove their holdings to reduce underperforming stocks to look better in their sharp ratio. Oh, is it? So year end window dressing. Hope, so they, they tidy up their portfolio to show good numbers for the end of 2023. Hopefully, they'll come back in to bought Baba in 2024. That, that's the hope. Okay. Russell said, Baba 65 should be turning point because there's price efficiency around there. Uh, so it might be a strong support level. I don't know. I don't know how to see the TA. 
but uh, now now the seventy dollar looks very weak. But I think tonight you Hong Kong already seventy, so tonight US probably the seventy two dollar level. I really, I think my own position is gonna be a bit red this week and next week, then bounce back for ex Christmas rally, inducing all times high for the year end. I think that's the US market you're talking about. Yeah, Nasdaq, Nasdaq. Nasdaq uh, and, uh, the Super 7, Crypto, wow, very, very, yes, Verlim, Master, happy one year anniversary, thanks, thanks, thanks for support, uh, very fast, uh. I think I stream, 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 stream one year already, very fast, very fast, so thanks all for the support, so Master will continue streaming, don't worry, then I've added the Master Cuts, yeah, so, slowly, slowly, I keep improving on, on my channel, or Lee Seng E, if Baba Hips, 150, 200, there'll be a lot of millionaires produced in this group. Yeah, I think a lot of people here, right? Wow, the position quite big. Eh? Some of y'all hold like 20,000 Alibaba shares in the Hong Kong market. Master is just a small fish only. You are the big player. Yeah, I think a lot of y'all will be very rich if Alibaba goes to 150, 200. All can fire already. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a small player only. Yeah. ELM, if Baba 65, I sell my US stocks pump in. Oh, 65 is damn cheap. Yeah. yeah. Ivy Lim, I watch ML so I never miss the Baba or Chinese stock rally. <laughs> Thanks for support. Yeah, Mama. Uh, yes, watch uh, Master the Sharing and you'll be updated on Baba. Any major news, I'll, I'll definitely cover one. Every, but I'm so concerned also. Ping An, price to book 0 0.637. Wow, so cheap. Ah. Almost 40% discount to book. Oh my god. Dividend you 7.89% ah, almost 8% dividend. I thought 75 but wow so, but master no money buy already. Wow, Ping An and Baba, easy buy, easy buy. Wow. Hopefully next year, next year I make some money that I buy I buy some Ping An support also. Yeah, okay. V uh Vivian Daniel um transitioning, they set their Paria underperforming insurance agents and focus on retailing the solid ones. Yeah, uh, in my deep dive, the Ping An, right? I mentioned that they actually lay off a lot of workers. They lay off almost 40% of their workers. So insurance business is a bit evil one. Uh. It benefits the shareholder, but it doesn't benefit the, the workers. Uh, if you are a loyal worker, they, they still kick you out. You cannot hit sales target, then they'll kick you out already. So it's quite stressful uh, to be an insurance agent. Usually, they, they bring in the, the young fresh grads then the first one or two year the young fresh grads they sell to their parents they sell to their relatives they sell to their friends then once their sources are dry out already right then one or two years later they leave the, the insurance industry so it's very cutthroat lah, i would say but it's beneficial for the insurance company it's very bad for the insurance agents yeah ryan youtube when do you think ccp will start talks with ping an to build up the country garden. So last month, I shared with you all the news that uh, Ping An is now doing due diligence on the country garden. Country garden is huge. They probably need like three to six months uh, to really analyze a uh, country garden. So in the first quarter, by the end of first quarter next year, we will have probably have an idea whether Ping An is going to buy into country garden or not. If in the end Ping An were to build up country garden, they will probably want to take a 51% stake or 50% stake in Country Garden. The same as what they did for the Fortune Land. So if they're going to make this announcement, probably it will be in the first quarter of next year. If by the end of first quarter next year, they never make the announcement, means, means they are not buying really. That's, that's my thinking. Uh. Hantu, crypto and go hard, big, big. Yeah, now the trend is that the central banks printed too much money. All this uh, uh, so-called gold and crypto alternative assets, oh, they are all rising rapidly. Ping An, they are changing business model. They used to blindly recruit insurance agents or find their uh, friends, uh, family chop carrot. Once exhausted, they don't bring sales. Yeah, 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 that, that, that's their, their method. So that affects their brand and quality. So now they change tactic, go for a smaller number of insurance but higher quality equipped with good knowledge and good customer service so, so that's good it better sustainable for a uh, long term anyone remember ml ever do deep dive yeah i did have a video on a uh, berkshire hathaway 
it's not a deep dive. Uh. I think I never put it under my deep dive uh, playlist. I think it was on the Berkshire the annual uh, annual report. So they had this annual letter to shareholders. So I talk about uh, Berkshire have all their different businesses. Talk about their annual letter. A uh, one hour over talk. Yeah, you just search for the BRKB or Berkshire Hathaway to, to find my that video. I think quite long ago already. I think or oh, might be like half a year or longer. Oh, quite quite some time already. Yeah, I need to be patient uh, for Ping An to turn around. But the good thing about Ping An is that you are getting almost eight percent dividend. Uh, while you are waiting for it to turn around. Whereas Alibaba, the dividend you one percent, one point five percent. That that's a bit low lah. But Ping An, they have a good track record of increasing dividend. So so that's what I like about it. Ah Nigo, I will make video show you all no need to buy multi companies uh, to make a uh, company, to make money. Yeah. Is it then buy what kind of companies? Actually, there are many ways to make money in the stock market. Like cyclical companies, uh, growth companies, uh, speculative, uh, all can make money. See what you like. For, for master, I'm more like a value investor. Like I just buy great companies, they're undervalued, then I just hold them for long term. That's my thinking. Uh. Yeah, so there are many ways to play, like Peter Lynch, the six types of investing. There's growth, dividend, a uh, turnaround, yeah, cyclical, uh, asset play, value play, a, 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 lot, a lot of ways to play the stock market. But you must know what you're doing. Uh. That's the most important thing. My man got less is more, quality better than quantity. Yes. So I think Ping An, they are slowly shifting their mod model, going for quality versus quantity. Uh, but but uh, oh, Felix Wong, uh, the, the analyst. Uh, yeah. So uh, Ping An, I think gone at the stage that it, it has very high growth, like 20% growth. Going ahead, more, more like 5-10% uh, growth, uh, I would say. Uh, Ping An no longer growing very fast, but, but it's a very good dividend play, I would say, and it's very undervalued. Historically, it trades at about two times book value. Now it's like 0 0.6 times book value. But will it go back to two times book value? I don't think so. Lah. But it can go easily back to one or 1.5 times book value. Because they can generate above normal uh, return on equity. MK, Baba, Charlie Munger average buy price is $181. If we buy now, we have a better price than Charlie Munger. Yeah. So Charlie Munger probably he already do his due diligence. That's why he bought a great company that was either fairly priced or undervalued. Now it's super super undervalued. It was undervalued, now it's super undervalued. That's the thing about uh, Alibaba. And yeah, he actually is quite concentrated. Yeah. Most of the time he buying just start a small position and keep buying more and more. Slowly build a position. Yeah, that's what I did with Alibaba. I start I keep buying, I buying and buying and up my entire portfolio is Alibaba. But it's just so cheap, yeah. Okay, my main call Paranto Rule 8020. Uh. 20% 20 of companies contribute to 80% of profits. Then you want to buy the 20% of companies, buy the best companies. That's why, like, a lot of boat, bought the top 20% boat, bought the blue chip boat, don't bought the Sampan reads. Yeah. Okay. Vivian, uh, Microsoft alone already 100% gains. Uh. Wow, so strong. Uh. Is it? Microsoft doubled this year. I didn't even know. It's so strong. Yeah, so today that's end of my sharing. Uh, just a one hour sharing. Today much shorter, but I, I never cover the US news. No mood to cover. I only cover the China market. Because everyone is, is so concerned. So the Moody's downgrade, it doesn't fundamentally affect the economy. Uh. It still depends on what the CCP will do for next year. But I think they already know that property is the main problem already, the main issue. But they don't want to rush in and to like do super QE, then they create another bubble. So they are do uh, like it's like doing an operation like that. So the property mar market is already the patient lying on the ICU bed. They are slowly trying to fix the problem. Uh, I think they don't want it to be like a V-shaped recovery and pump a lot of money. That they want to slowly stabilize things. But I'm still hopeful that they can do a QE. La. I think we really need a QE. Uh, we need a bazooka. So we see how it goes next year. So endure, endure. Hopefully Alibaba can find support at this level. La. Because the like last week and today the sell and the past two days the sell down is mostly because of the Moody's downgrade. So now they downgrade already. Uh, the worm has come out already. 
So I think most of the negative news already out there. What other negative news can we have? A Taiwan invasion? I, I don't know. Yeah. So endure lah. I think most of the negative news already out already. So don't worry too much. That 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 will be my thinking. Oh, semi Vulu, your crypto doing very well there. What la? What la? Same for crypto. Diamond hand patiently waiting. Bitcoin is global twenty four seven. I think crypto is better. Oh, semi Vulu and our Go Kim, our crypto buddies. Oh, so congrats to you. What big big on the crypto? See you all want to join us on the Baba boat or not? Yeah. Very funny, ah! Uh, you're into crypto, then you all join the Baba community. Also, don't know uh whether the Gold Kim and Semi Vulu you all got buy a bit of uh, Baba or not. Yeah, but Master do cover a bit of crypto lah uh, once in a while here and there. Yeah, so that's all my sharing. Hope you all have a good rest uh. Don't be too stressed out about uh Alibaba. Master ninety percent my portfolio Alibaba. I see, I'm still smiling. Uh, but but if it goes below sixty, then then Master won't be smiling already. But I'm hopeful that. Hopefully, you can Alibaba can hold at this level, lah. Yeah, so maybe I have to look at the pre market. Ah, I see already also seen. Let's look at have a quick look at the Baba and SE. Baba and SE. Today is what? Today is Tuesday, right? Yeah. So another three more trading days to do to go. I prefer we end. We end. It doesn't uh drop. Oh, so it's down two point five percent pre market for SE probably because of the news. That the TikTok is partnering with the Tokyopedia, so SE thirty five is still the key support level. Alibaba down one point two percent, seventy two support. This 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 hold above seventy. Ah, uh, once I see sixty something ah, wow, master start start to stress already. Seven something still okay lah, still fit lah. Because below sixty ah, master one ton now. But I don't think it will go below sixty lah unless the news something very very negative happen. Then maybe we will go below sixty. Otherwise, I don't think so. So thanks all for coming in. You all have a good rest. Take care all. Have a good rest. Master also are tired. I think I have a early rest tonight. Dream of Alibaba going to two hundred. Bye bye. Take care everyone.